Join the Community Wine and Spirits Monthly Wine Club, the Mutual Satisfaction Society. You'll receive three carefully selected bottles every month, complete with tasting notes and detailed information on each wine, all for $90. Join in the next 24 hours and get 20% off your first shipment. Want fancier wine? We got you. Join the Mutual Satisfaction Society Plus for extra satisfaction. $150 will get you three very special bottles. Let us take the trouble out of selecting great wines that you will love. Your first shipment is 20% off just for listening to View the Right Thing. Join the community today at www.communitywineandspirits.com or DM us at communityws. Ranked 61st on the American Film Institute's list of most inspiring films ever made. Set in 1933, a young boy's sharecropping father is sent to prison for a petty crime. The boy desperately tries to visit his father and ends up meeting a school teacher who may very well change the trajectory of the poor boy's life. Wes and Alexis delve deep into the 1972 film Sounder on View the Right Thing. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hey, welcome back to another episode of View the Right Thing. I'm Wes, and with me as always is Alexis. Hello. Hi, Alexis, how you doing? Hi, Wes. I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm 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 okay. I'm better than I was in our last episode. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I can hear it too. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. I got I got significantly better, and then uh, I don't know. I think I got like some sort of sinus thing, and oh. then that just like took me, it, it set me back again. So yeah. Um, but I, I'm I'm feeling better again now. So yay. Uh, anything? Any exciting news happen while we've been away? Um, exciting news? Not. Nothing terribly exciting. Yeah. No. Any? Have you seen any new previews or anything that you're excited about? Um, I didn't see any new previews, but I did finally watch Fall Guy. Oh, I still haven't seen it. <gasps> it's fun. Yeah, I've, I've I've had it recommended to me. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. Okay. No mm-hmm. new previews though. Wait, you saw Fall Guy, but no. Pre- oh, you saw it at home. Yeah. Uh, let me see who it is. <laughs> Um, I saw the, uh, Smile 2 trailer. Oh. Um, did you see Smile 1? I don't even know what that is. It's spooky. Oh, yeah, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, it's a new, new Smile trailer cool. out. It, uh, it looks fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm more interested in Trap, the new M. Night Shyamalan movie. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm interested in that. Uh, did not realize that it starred Josh Hartnett. <gasps> have you seen the trailer no so we i i had seen the trailer a couple times and then i was like i want to i want to watch this trailer one more time because i i, I do really like m night Shyamalan. Mm-hmm. um i think he's become sort of an underrated director because he did some really bad work mm-hmm. and so that just sort of like killed all his credibility yeah um but i do like him a lot and i think he's really creative and so i was like i want to I watch this trailer one more time so I watched the trailer again, and I was like, "Who? who's, do you know the premise of Trap? No. So the premise is that this guy is taking his daughter to a concert she's super excited about. It's kind of like, it's got, like, the the performance isn't Taylor Swift vibes, but it's that sort of, like, dad's taking their daughter mm. to, to the concert, to the pop concert. And so there's this woman that's singing, and so there's a concert through the whole movie. Okay. And the dad's like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom, and he goes to the bathroom, and he notices that they're locking down all of the entrances to the arena and he gets some guys like, Hey, what's going on? What's going on? And the guy's like, Oh, I, I'm not supposed to say anything. And he's like, you didn't hear it from me, but you know, that butcher who's been killing all those people, he's here and they think they're going to catch him here. So, you know, Whoa. Uh, and so the guy goes to the bathroom and he checks his phone and he's checking his home security camera because he's got somebody held in his basement. He's the butcher. <gasps> and so, so it's this like, I think it's like a cat and mouse thriller. Um, and I'd seen the, tra- the trailer many times, but then I was like, Oh, who's the woman that's singing? Who's, who's going to be the, doing this? Cause the part of the thing is it's like performance by so-and-so mm-hmm. as Raven. 
and I never I never like processed the name that was on the screen. And I was like, oh, who who is it that's performing? And um, as I was looking at the IMDb, I was like, Josh Hartnett's in this. And so I look, <laughs> and he's the dad in the movie, and it does not look like him in the trailer. Oh, and so, weird. Because I think it's, he's older, and he's a little heavier, and he's got facial hair. And yeah. this is like, I just did not recognize him at all. <laughs> um, and so it turns out that the woman that's performing is M. Night Shyamalan's daughter. Really? Yeah, the pop singer. Yeah. Wow. So I guess that's his way of helping Stoddard kick off her career. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. I was like, oh, Nepo baby. But, but you know, whatever. <laughs> some some people just got to take that take advantage of that. Man, if my parents were famous Hollywood mm-hmm. people, I would take advantage of it. Yeah. And if I had kids, I would help them. Right. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, it sucks that some people don't get opportunities, but. Yes. I get that. I yeah. understand that complaint, but mm-hmm. I also get like. Like if I if I was if I did well in my career, I'd be hiring my friends over and over again. Yeah. So you know whatever. I get it. Yeah. But yeah. So um, <laughs> so trap looks interesting. And awesome. I'm I'm uh, I'm pretty pretty excited for it. That's great. Try to think if there's any other trailers that I I've seen recently. Um, Fly me to the moon's coming out. I'm not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> um, it's Scarlett Johansson and uh, Channing Tatum. And it's a it's um a space race movie, and I think I, I could be wrong about this, but I think the premise is that Scarlett Johansson's like a PR person, and Channing Tatum works for NASA, and she's brought in to in case something goes wrong, they want to have a fake moon landing shot uh-huh. in case something in case they don't make it or something. And so I'm like, uh, I don't know. Is that a true story? And if it is, like, are we feeding, you know, are we, are we feeding the conspiracy people? Right. So I, I, have, I have mixed feelings about that. Hmm. Um, and let's see if there's any others that I just recently saw. Um, I feel like there's something I was really excited for. And I can't remember what it is. I mean, I'm excited for Horizon, uh, the new Kevin Costner yeah. epic it got bad reviews from Cannes, but I'm still going to see it anyways. I thought there was a seven minute standing ovation. Not for, not for Horizon. Oh. I think it was, I think coming out of Cannes, it was at like 30%. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. The, the, what I'm hearing is that, so the movie is two parts that we know of right now. Yeah. I may have gotten some inside information that maybe it's going to be up to six parts. Oh my God. Gosh. Um, the first movie is just under three hours, and I believe the second one's just under three hours. Um, and so my my understanding is the complaint is that there are so many characters mm. that they introduce that this first movie is just introductions. So no. every time you just like kind of get into a character, it like changes what the story is. Yeah. Um, it may pay off later down the road. Like yeah. part two, it may pay off. But you have to be willing to like pay that that fee for entry to right. to really get it. So I think that seems to be the, the biggest complaint. Yeah. So I'm, could it not have been a series? Well and that was that was another question was like, you know, he he's had really good luck with Yellowstone. Right. And um could this have been could this have been better told as a TV series? Right. Um but sometimes I he, probably I, I Knowing him and his vision and scope mm. of what he wants to see, sometimes you need a big screen to tell that story. Um, so I'm going to go see it. I'm re- I'm really excited for it because I really like his work anyways. Yeah. And I like Westerns. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, and I like the idea of like a big sprawling thing that's going to be multiple parts. Yeah. Uh, and I want to see, I, I, I hear it's gorgeous. Like the cinematography is supposed to be really, really good in it. So I want to see it on a big screen. Yeah. So, so I'm excited for that. Mm. Um, oh, one other one. I'll mention one other one. Okay. Paddington Three is happening, and there's a trailer for it, and I'm <laughs> I'm I'm here for it. Did you see? Have you seen those movies? I have seen zero Paddington. Okay. When I tell you Paddington Two, <laughs> everyone keeps saying Paddington is Two is one of the greatest movies <laughs> ever made. It's so. Look, I'm gonna here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove it to you. I'm gonna pull it up on Rotten Tomatoes here. Rotten Tomatoes. Let's see. I swear there was some like bro comedy where they were talking about how Paddington 2 broke them. It's so good. It's so... You, you don't understand. You need to see the Paddington movies. 
Paddington two. What what score do you think it might? Oh, let's let's go with audience. The audience score is lower, by the way. Oh, than okay. The, than the critics. Okay. What do you think the audience score is? Ninety five. No, you're too high. Oh, okay. <laughs> 85. Now you're too low. 88%. Oh, wow. Okay. 88% from audience. That's audiences. still really great. So what do you think the critic's score is? 92. 99%. Holy cannoli. 99%. <laughs> wow. It's 253 critics weighed in on that, and it's at 99%. Paddington 2. It's so good. It's so good. It's really moving and like... Wow. And like you genuinely like fear the consequences of things in the film yeah. and um it's very sweet it's like it's like one of those movies that like fills you with like joy and warm feelings Aww. it's it's up your alley alexis you, okay. you would like it okay but you gotta watch the first one just so you okay know. i mean you probably don't really need to watch the first one but, but i will if you want to know that his relationship to the family and the neighbors then watching the first one is ah. a good idea okay well and if, or if you don't know the Paddington story very well, I know the the book. Yeah, I mean, story it's based on the book. from yeah, yeah. So I don't know how how closely they they stuck to the book in the yeah. films. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's got um, Ben Wishaw. He's Paddington. Really? Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Mm, that it, sounds... it, it's really good cast. Uh, okay. Here, let's see. Um, oh, and by the way, the new one, Paddington Three. Mm-hmm. Olivia Coleman is in it. Yes. Uh, oh, that here. makes me happy. Paddington. We're gonna we're gonna pull the Paddington since we're okay. on Pad. Yeah. Pad- Welcome to Paddington Talk. <laughs> Paddington. So the first one is Hugh Bonneville, mm. Sally Hawkins, mm. Julie Walters, Jim Broadbent. Uh, let me. I'm just skipping through to find some. Imelda Staunton. What? Michael Gambon. Ben Wishaw, of course. Um. Matt Lucas. Oh my gosh. Good, uh, Nicole Kidman. Peter Capaldi. That's just the first movie. Wow. Um, the second movie has those people. Some mm. of those people. Yeah. Uh, Hugh Grant. Uh, some of the same people, same people, same people. Uh, there's somebody really famous in that I thought. And I can't remember. But now I can't. I. Peter Capaldi's in it again. Peter Capaldi's great. Um, oh, Richard A. Awadi is in the second one. What? Uh, Interesting. A, a lot of those same people that I mentioned. But, oh, Two Brent. doctors in one. Oh, no. Richard no. A. Awadi. Sorry. No, I was thinking I of. Grab. Sorry. N- Chudy. Yeah. Um, Brendan Gleeson is in the second <gasps> one. Uh, a bunch of people that you, you might recognize. but I. Oh, Joanna Lumley. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's They, they get good. They get Get good casts for these movies. Uh, so wow. the, new, the new one's called Paddington in Peru. Oh, um, and they've added um, oh Emily Mort- Mortimer, <gasps> Olivia Coleman, Antonio Banderas, uh, <laughs> a bunch of the other same people. Uh, yeah, so what a cast! Yeah, they're they're because the movies are really good. That's incredible. Yeah, the movies are 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 super super solid. Wow. I was like, who directed Paddington too? Who directed it? You tell me. <laughs> Paddington won, by the way, 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. So n- not like... But still. Not not bad. Um, uh, What's her name? Um, Who I said was in the new one? Uh, Emily Mortimer? Yes. She's taking over Sally Hawkins' role. Oh. Well, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, what a... What a... Uh, what a good cast. Yeah. Who directed it? Yeah, I'm still looking for that. Oh, okay. I was trying to find it. <laughs> Film editing producer, cinematographer. Why isn't it just like right? Why? Why? It just... Screenwriter, producers, cinematographer, film editing. The first one was Paul King. Okay. Well, I, I bet it was him on all of them. And the second one is Paul King. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say like... It'd be so weird if they were 97% or whatever and then changed the director. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. He directed uh, Wonka as well. Oh, you liked Wonka a lot. I did. I, I liked Wonka okay. Yes. Cool. And yeah. and Space Force. 
I love Space Force. Yeah. I didn't expect to. <sighs> oh, In the mighty boot. I'm, I'm about to. I'm about. To, <laughs> I'm about to date our, our episode. Oh. Tell Do- me. Donald Sutherland has died. Yes. They did not. Did not see that till just now. Yeah. Well, now I'm bummed out. Uh, check out the Mash episode of <laughs> Be the Right Thing. Oh boy, I'm terrible. All right, let's talk about this movie that we're here for. Yes. Um, it's called Sounder. Sounder. It is called Sounder, and Sounder. She was so prepared a minute ago, I was, and then I, and then I, I distracted the... her, and, <laughs> and she put her phone down. And... So Sounder is based on a book mm-hmm. called Sounder, uh, and it is about, uh, here's the little snippet, the oldest son of a loving, strong family of black sharecroppers comes in an age, comes of age in the Depression era South after his father is imprisoned for stealing food. Yes. It's um, interesting. Okay. So uh, first, mm-hmm. let's ask the question. Yes. Did you enjoy this movie? Did you like this movie? I did. The beginning, I was kind of... Like, where are we going with yeah. this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, but it grew on me. Yeah, same, yeah. same. And it's interesting because, you know, we've we've sort of refocused the podcast into, like, these are the movies you should watch before you die. And I was, like, thinking to myself, that's mm-hmm. the new question I ask myself while I'm watching is, like, is this a movie that you have to watch? Like, if you miss this movie, mm. would you be feel like you're film education was incomplete right yeah um and i kind of think that as an adult maybe you're probably okay if you miss it um it's worth watching Mm. um but as a child i feel like every school should show this like every grade school absolutely yeah um it's not like it's like an epic or anything it just it just is um a really uh kind of straightforward take on what the depression was probably like for black families in the South. Yeah. Even though it seemed like what they showed in the film seemed incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like they didn't show enough of it. Oh yeah. They could have been a lot more brutal with it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, but it, so that children, does make it, yeah, that does make it more palatable for a child yeah. to watch and to understand like, this is what our history was. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like today, I was like, gosh, our history sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did say that, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's it's so important for everyone to know about all of our history. Yeah. You know, and it's so clear. Welcome to Lexus with her woke agenda. Hey, come on now. <laughs> Hey, if we don't learn from our history, we're just going to end up repeating it. No, I agree. So I agree I'm very... You. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Oh, so so the reason why I think in schools mm-hmm. is that I think... I was thinking about a um, friend of the show, Nick, his kids. And I was like, would they sit still for this movie? Like, if I had them over, set them down, would they, would they watch it or would they get bored and, like, look for Minecraft instead? And I was thinking, like... One of the things that I think is important with this is to have a conversation Mm -hmm. following it because it leaves a lot of the sort of brutal truths about our country out of it. Yeah. Um, And I also think children are more likely to sit through and and take in in school because they're like, yay, we're not working out of a workbook. We're we're watching on the big the big TV and the VHS. You know, that's not what (laughs) they do anymore, but. That's what we that's what we experience. Yes. They, they Roll wheel the card in. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I feel like this is a, a really interesting and good opportunity to educate kids. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, the book. Uh, whoa. Uh, sorry. I still don't have a pop filter. Sorry, folks. Um, uh, it, it was a Newbery Award winner. Yeah. Um, and I remember seeing in this little scholastic book fair. I remember always seeing it as one of the books you could select. Yes, in the little catalog, um, with the picture of the dog and the and the, the gold Newberry stamp. gold stamp. On <laughs> yep. It. Yeah. So, um, uh, this movie yeah. uh, was nominated for four Oscars, uh, including Best Actor, Best Actress, Screenplay, and Picture, mm-hmm. um, which was, a, I, I think, a pretty big deal. Um, 
it uh, it stars Cicely Tyson, yes. Paul Winfield, um, Kevin Hooks, mm-hmm. um, and Kevin Hooks went on to become a director. The, the 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 guy who played David went on to become a director. Directed our friend of the show, Nick Eversman, in The Good Lord Bird. No way. Um, but even more fantastic, Disney for the Wonderful World of Disney in the early two thousands remade this film and had Kevin Hooks direct it. Are you serious? What a cool thing, right? That is so cool. Yeah, yeah. Wow, he's done. He's done a lot. Oh yeah, he did a this ton of incredible. Prison Break. He did Lost. I mean, yeah. yeah, he's he's a really well accomplished director. That is awesome. Yeah. I love that. I would love to like sit down and ask questions about what shooting something like this was like. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it on its face does not look very fun. Um, (laughs) No. It's a lot of like being dirty and being wet and a lot of walking and... And a lot of barefoot. Yeah. I know there's a lot of, you know, I I understand movie magic. I've been on a set and I know how many breaks you get and there's a lot of waiting, but... Still, it, but this is in the seventies. The seventies when it was probably like before child labor laws. Maybe? Yeah, and well, there were well, I think the Mickey Rooney stuff had already happened, right? Like, um, oh, okay, what, is that right, Mickey Rooney? Because he was like a kid actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's what I'm thinking of. And uh, so maybe it was probably better, probably not as good as it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just uh, it, it may have been an era where waiting for camera to be ready um was waiting in the sun i don't know yeah like waiting outside versus a nice cool trailer there didn't look to be any lick of air conditioning (laughs) i I noticed there's a scene um so so in the movie uh the father is struggling to like feed his family Mm -hmm. and they wake up one morning and there's food being cooked like meat Yes. And um, it turns out he's stolen uh, something out of somebody's smokehouse. And he gets arrested and goes to jail and eventually a work camp. And um, when the son goes to visit him in the jail, brings him a cake. Mm-hmm. I notice that scene. Sweat is just like pouring off this kid. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that is they, that, that was a, uh, probably a hot unventilated room. Oh, my God. They're in. They may have shot that in a real jail in uh, Louisiana. Yeah. So they did. It did seem like they shot it on location. Uh, there was like a little thanks at the end. Yeah. So uh, thanking the this parish where they were able to film like all of the all of the film, which is amazing. Uh, side note: I had always considered a parish to be part of a church mm-hmm. and not. A, an area of land where people lived. So in Louisiana, it's the equivalent of a county. Aha. Uh-huh. They just call it parishes. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I lived in Louisiana for, for a year. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So now you know about parishes. Hey. The movie's kind of, um, it's a little bit closer to, you know, there's all sorts of like different ways to like, tell a narrative um and i found myself like it's slow Mm -hmm. um it's more of like a slice of life kind of thing um at at first especially it didn't seem like there was a ton of music it seemed like as the movie went on and there was less dialogue Mm -hmm. there was more music like there's a lot of like walking and stuff right um a music by Taj Mahal. Yes. Um, who's also in the movie. Who is in... The, um, there's a sequel to this um, that doesn't feature anybody except for Taj Mahal is the only returning person. <laughs> um, but it's about them building a school. Oh, for wow. The kids. Yeah. I like that. I don't know if there's a sequel book or not, it, but that's the sequel movie. Right. Interesting. Um, well, tell me about some of your your thoughts and some notes. Some of my have. thoughts. Uh, well... Um, I was so interested because <laughs> before going into it, I'm like, Sounder, wh- where does that come in? Yeah. Sounder is the name of the dog. So I was like, well, then Sounder must be like the focus yeah. of the film. And I guess sort of in a way he is, 
but it's it's so much looser than that i guess is i think sounder represents something larger in the film than just the dog like i don't think the dog the character of sounder Mm -hmm. is exactly all that important it's more what sounder represents yeah so there's a there's um this theme of loyalty Mm -hmm. throughout the film um you know the which there's not really many better symbols for loyalty than man's best friend yeah um so uh and the dog like comes back and after being wounded grievous grievously gravely yes gravely gravely wounded gravely wounded um grievously that would be weird um (laughs) And and then stays with the kid the whole time, like goes on the journey with the kid. Um, and there you see sort of loyalty pop up several times. The first that I noticed um, was she, the um, white woman. I can't remember her character's name. Do you remember? Her character's name is Mrs. Boatwright. Mm. So Mrs. Boatwright... Um, has her washing done by David's mother, mm-hmm. Cicely Tyson's character. Um, and uh, she gives David books to read. And the book that she gives him is The Three Musketeers, which is a movie about, or a, a, movie, mm-hmm. a book about class and uh, class struggles and loyalty. Right. Right. Loyalty is like the main theme of The Three Musketeers. And in this movie, you see loyalty sort of being questioned. In fact, in the police station, there's a sign on one of the walls that references lo- it has the word loyalty in it. Um, wow! And and what was her name? Mrs. Boat Boatman Boat Boatwright Boatwright. Um, she has her loyalty called into question, right? So, like, she has a decision to make between being loyal to the law and her race, or being loyal to I think what she views as humanity. And and so she has a choice to make as far as loyalty goes. Um, and then um, David, of course, has his loyalty kind of come into play as well because he, you know, he's clearly loyal to his father and loyal to his family, he goes on this journey. Mm-hmm. And then he meets this this teacher who right. takes him in and wants to help him get educated. And he, he clearly has a thirst for knowledge. He learned how to read. Yeah. Um, and and he wants to go to school um but then when the father comes home his that, that loyalty comes into question about whether he wants to stay with his father or leave his family and go get an education right right so the so i think the dog is oh something how can i say <laughs> so the dog is less a um a, a, an important um narrative figure but but more an important uh um symbolic right. figure at right. least at least that's how i saw it well, because Sounder lost his sound, his, like, mm. known, like, his calling card of, yeah, of Bark. Yeah. Yeah. Until the father the, came back. Until the father comes home. And that might be, yeah, another symbol of loyalty. Because the, the other kid, one of the, the brothers asks, you know, when's he going to bark again? Yeah. Like, he will. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And... and and I, I did like that you bring up the father coming home mm-hmm. um, when uh, the kid is talking to his father and when Dave is talking to his father in jail yes. and he asks about Sounder and he's like, oh, the dad says he'll come back um, when his when he's healed from his wounds. And um, the dog comes back somewhat healed, but still still limping. Mm-hmm. And when the dad comes home at the end and he's limping and the dog is the first to go greet him. The only thing I thought in my mind was he'll come home when he, when his wounds have healed. Oh, and I was like, oh man, oh. what a great what a great way to like encapsulate that moment, right? Yeah. So, oh, that is beautiful. Yeah. Gosh. Oh, oh, the books that he gets from um, Mrs. Johnson are yes. also about loyalty, right? Like it's about Harriet Tubman, mm-hmm. who is. It's a loyalty to your people mm-hmm. and um, Crispus Attucks, who was fighting for the, you know, because he was loyal to the country. He was the first black man killed in the, in the revolution. Right. And so he was, is that the one that was written by W.E.B. Du Bois? Yes. About Crispus okay, Attucks. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> uh, no, 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 mm. no. Because then, then he asks after that 
Um, do you have anything written mm. by somebody who's, about somebody who's not dead? That's, no, Christmas you. Axe was dead at that point. Okay. So no, it was one one of the two books that he takes home. Both those books are about loyalty. So, gotcha. Um, so that's a, just another kind of interesting. That is really cool. Um, but I I love that that teacher gave him books about black people. Yeah. Yeah. Like why would how would he have ever in Louisiana mm-hmm. learned from his white teachers about black history? Mm-hmm. Cuz that didn't people didn't No, I'm sorry. White people <laughs> that were teaching didn't think it was important to teach no. that information. No. Which it totally is. Mm-hmm. Because it gives you a completely different view on how the world was. Yeah, Florida. <sighs> <laughs> well, and that's and I think that was the intention of making this film. Yeah, I mean they could have they could have gone a lot of di- directions probably with this. They probably could have been a little more, even more sanitary with it and mm. made it more family friendly, even. Um, and because you know there were lots of Disney movies then uh, when this movie came out, so they could have they could have gone that direction. They could yeah. have they could have gone the direction of Pete's Dragon or something, right? Um, <laughs> And and they didn't. And I think that sort of what you're saying is sort of acknowledging the hardships and the history of of um, black people and black culture. Mm-hmm. Um, the this movie is known as the anti black exploitation film. Yeah. Um, and it, the first of them. Uh, this was an era is like 1972. I think um, this was an era where um, all of the films being made about black people by black people were black exploitation films um and those were all about sort of the urban gritty experience and they were all like in a way a melodrama they're all like bigger than life characters yeah. um lots of like pimps and detectives and f- action people yeah um and so uh this was sort of the first film about about black people by black people um that was realistic and actually captured their experience. Right. Um, so, so yeah, so it's known as... There the, was not any overacting. It was hyper-realistic. Yeah. So this was known as the the anti-black exploitation film. Yeah. Not not like we're against black exploitation, but we're right. just the opposite. And p- moviegoers hadn't seen this before. And it was sort of viewed like this movie probably won't do well. And then it did really, really well. Yeah. Um, and was nominated for, you know... Um, quite a few awards yeah it's the first film um to feature oscar nominated performances by two black actors yeah so um paul winfield nominated for best actor cicely tyson for best actress yeah um that wouldn't happen again for 21 years (gasps) in what what's love got to do with it oh my gosh um it has happened since a third time um, 27 years after the second time um, oh in uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom with oh. Viola Davis, which was like fantastic. Wow. Did you see that one? It's no. good. I think it was on Netflix. It might, you might still be able to get it on okay. Netflix. It's really, really good. Um, and it's like, it's like a really like simple, intimate story that all takes place in one location with like just incredible, incre- I mean, obviously Viola Davis, but yeah, um, uh, I'll look it up for you and tell you. <laughs> it's uh, oh Chadwick Boseman, Aww. obviously amazing. Yes, um, Coleman Domingo, Ooh. obviously amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Potts, which you've seen and stuff. Yeah. Um, some some other people you've seen you might not recognize their names. John, Johnny Coyne. Um, yeah. So it, it's a it's a really really um, uh, it's a it's about um a blues singer and her band trying oh, to record yeah. um, a record in Chicago in 1927. Oh. It's, and it's, and it's really got that 1927 like oh, jazzy vibe to it. Nice. It's really like, but it's also like raw yeah. at the same time. Like the, like the people are kind of like tough and hard and mean to each other. And it's just like, yeah, it's, it's nice. really great performances. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I was, I was going to say like, Oh, this movie was directed by a white man, but also I have to step back and be, okay, this is 72. Yeah. They probably were filming in 71. There was, 
to get something like this put together. Oh yeah. I understand. And and also a great director. He's the same man who directed yeah. HUD. Yeah. Well, and and the rest of the cast and a lot of the crew were black. And that's yeah. when I say a film by black people for black, that's what I that's what I mean by I that. Um so the um the guy who wrote this Lon Elder the 3rd, mm-hmm. he was the first African American and person of color uh to be nominated for an Academy Award for um best screenplay. Wow. Yeah. Um, he's also the first African American and person of color to be nominated for screenwriting, uh, just in general. Wow. <laughs> um, with, uh, Susan DePass nominated for best original screenplay, um, for Lady Sings the Blues also in 1972. Oh my gosh. So it was, it was a, wow. a big deal. Um, cause it was written, you know, again, going, kind of going back to like f- starring black people, mm-hmm. written, you know, made by black people. Yeah. The, the voices that were being told. Right. Um, and the voices that were shown were not from the perspective of, of white people. Right. Um, I did I did notice um, prison camp, not a single white person, uh, not sorry, sorry, not a single white prisoner in, right. the, in the camps. Right. I don't think they were intended for white people. Yeah, correct. But, like, they weren't prison camps. They were... Well, and we still have, essentially. I yes. Mean, it, it was, so then and today, um, the prison economy is sort of um built to enable um slavery we still are allowed slavery yep. if people are are prisoners so um so these like for-profit prisons essentially are slave mm-hmm. camps still to this day um and so that was a way especially in the depression era to continue to have slaves um without calling it slavery right and these were like heavy work Camps. Oh yeah, they were like like loggers. Lumber. Yeah, yeah. And Dangerous. The quar- uh the dad was injured at a in, quarry. Yeah, injured in a dynamite explosion, dynamite accident. Yeah. My gosh, it it was. I didn't I didn't know what work camps did, but I didn't think it was that kind of. Well, you know, you, when you work was, when you yeah. see it in cartoons, it's always like breaking rocks. Yeah, you know, like or chain gains. Working chain. on the railroad. Yeah, railroad. Breaking rocks, which I would assume would be like quarry work. Yeah. Um, huh. uh, you know, stuff on the side of the road. Yeah. I mean, I guess this is not nearly as brutal, but like, you know, nowadays we have people pick up garbage and stuff on the sides of the roads, the sides of highways. Yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. But, uh, but probably much, not, not as hard on your body. Much lighter work. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Oh, you know, the fact that, th- you know, you were saying that it was slow. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was the intention mm. because everything was slower. There, yeah. w- there was no technology. Yeah, everything took longer. You, you didn't always talk because you were probably tired or hot, or you just didn't have anything to talk about. Yeah, story dictated the pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was interesting. It like put us in that slower. Yeah, I mean, I'm not mad at it being slow. It no, just, yeah, it 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 did um, surprise me, and so it took a, a little bit to get used to. But yeah, um, some of the the time passages. <laughs> yeah, didn't I? I didn't know how long time had passed. Yeah, it's like how long does it take to grow sugar cane? Exactly. Well, and you know, Sounder has come back. How long was Sounder gone? Yeah, was it a long time? And and then. Yeah, how long was the dad in jail versus getting sent to the camp? And... Right. Or Mrs. Um, Bo- Boatwright mm-hmm. comes over two days later in the same dress that she had been in two days prior. Yeah. So was that a normal thing because it was the 30s? Yeah, it was her like, or... I'm going out of the house dress. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, um, maybe, we can, maybe we can read into it. Maybe it was that she went to the jailhouse which would be like beneath like maybe dirty right and then she was going to poor black people's house which is right you know maybe i don't know i'm reading into it i'm yeah. just well or or they had her for x number of days and they only had x number of costumes so. <laughs> right um i did i did think it was interesting her mrs boatwright um choosing to break the law the way she did right and then deciding not to tell David mm-hmm. where the dad was and then changing her mind a couple of days later. Uh, and then there was like this whole thing where it was like, oh, we'll, we'll pull out this map and this is where we think it is. And 
how far it is and whatnot. Um, to to I guess to demonstrate to us how much of a journey this is going to be. Mm. But I kind of thought it was like she was going to. I was like, oh, we're planning a heist now. Like, not that they were going to break him out, but that <laughs> that they were all in this together, and she was going to help them get there. But that was the extent of her helping them. Right. Was... She's like, here's a map. Bye. There are these letters and numbers, and what she described made zero sense to me. Oh, really? Especially when she where she was pointing on the map. Yeah, it was confusing. That I was like, if I had lived then, I would have been totally screwed because I had no, I would have had no idea where to go. Yeah, I think she was basically saying that like. Here's the point where we think this town is. Mm-hmm. We know that the camp is in this parish. The problem is that the parish is half the size of this map. So the town is at one end of the parish. So he could be anywhere in between here and there. Yeah. And so that was the the lettering and numbering was because it's a grid, right? So like the columns are A, B, C, D, E, mm-hmm. and then the rows are one, two, three, four, five. And so she's like, this is an A9 or whatever. Oh. But the parish actually starts over here. So um, so that was, I think, just a way to sort of explain to us that A, this is going to be long, and B, it's not going to be easy. Right. Because we don't, we know. Like, imagine if somebody was like, oh, yeah, there's this place in L.A. County. Go find it. <laughs> you know, Good you'd, luck. You'd be like, oh, Okay. Which part is this like the Hollywood part of Los Angeles County or is it the was Long Beach? But even if they said Hollywood is like which part of Hollywood? Hollywood, West Hollywood, North Hollywood. Like, (laughs) where am I going? Um, No way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So. okay, that makes more sense. But the fact how old is David? Do we do we ever know? I don't think we know. I suspect he's like 11 or 12. Right. Okay, that's Maybe what I was expecting. The, but the fact that that was an okay age to just send your child off for a couple of days. You have no idea where they're going and no idea when they'll come back. Yeah, it's uh, yes and no. So, yeah. you know, when I, I, I'm assuming I'm a little older than you. Yeah. Um. So, I, But I'm going to guess that your child is probably pretty similar in that, like, you know, especially in the summertime and stuff, it was like, get out of the house. I don't want you in the house. Go outside and play. Your life wasn't like this. It, it was, was like, not. go outside and play. Come back before dinner. Oh, like that would have been so awesome. Oh yeah, I remember getting on bikes with my friends and we just like, would ride and just like end up at a baseball field and wow. throw a ball around or um, uh, we just get up to no good or we we go to somebody else's house and hang out and play Nintendo at their oh. house. But yeah, there was a lot of like go outside and play. Um, and yeah, and so, and, and do you know where your children are? I, I, so one summer, you know, because I was home alone during the summer, one summer I almost burned down that, and I didn't almost burn down the house. I definitely caught some things on fire on the stove. Um, no, and definitely got in trouble for it, but everything's fine. The Mm -hmm. house didn't burn down. All was good. Um, so yeah, I mean, kids were, and I was probably 12 ish. 11 okay. or 12 when that when that happened so mm. yeah i mean and you know also this kid was like the man of the house right like he was the the one yeah. who was allowed to go see his father in the jail the mom wasn't allowed to go in and see yeah. the dad um because he was the he was the household leader at that point and he was a man and he was a man um quote unquote man um he was male compared to a woman um, he was better y- yeah uh I'm just, just just making the distinction that he was actually a child. Yes. But, um, and and he was sort of like, you know, when the mom wasn't there, when she went to go try to see the dad, yeah. um, he was the one left in charge of taking care of the kids and getting all the chores done and drawing the water and, you yeah. know, all Making that Making sure they eat. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's a couple things at play. One, he was forced to grow up faster and that happens all the time. All now, the time. Still today. Mm-hmm. Um, and... And then also, I think there was a um, a different attitude towards what kids are able to do on their own, even right. even as recent as um, the 1990s, the 80s and 90s. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. What a wild time, Alexa. I, I, it's so funny. Like, I, I'm not going to ask you how old you are, but, um, <laughs> but, it, but I don't see myself as like greatly older than you but i feel like i must be if <laughs> if you weren't 
I'm an only child, though, and mm. I was born around the time when children were getting stolen. Like, <laughs> there were lots of kidnaps. Sure. Kidnappings. kidnappings. And so I, like, I was very protected. Yeah. And so my mom... Don't look at vans. <laughs> stranger danger. You know, yeah. that's... I grew up with stranger danger. Yeah. So... Um, we definitely had that, like, you know, don't take candy from strangers, don't talk to strangers kind of thing. Yeah. But... Um, but no, I was overprotected. I, if, if I wanted to play, I could play in my backyard or in the basement with my Barbies. Yeah. Or read a book. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we were just wandering. We were loose. I When, when I was 11, 10 or 11, I got uh, a booklet of gift certificates to a movie theater. And... I think a bus pass. No. And it was like, you want to go to the movies? Go to the movies. That would have been so great. Yeah. Independent little me. I would have been like, let's go. Oh, man. I watched UHF so many times and <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Saw some movies that, you know, weren't good. Looking at you, Mel Gibson. <laughs> um, <clears throat> nobody needs to watch Firebirds. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so different time, different time. And what, what other notes? I don't, I don't have a lot else for for this particular. You know, we've we've covered pretty much everything that yeah that I wrote down. I think the one thing that stuck out to me was that um, the boy playing David, mm-hmm. sorry, um, was writing left handed. Mm. In the 1930s, it was that on a thing in the 1930s. It was very rare, and being left-handed was considered to be evil. Oh yeah, malformed. Yes, um, my my nanny, my grandmother, was left-handed, mm-hmm. um, and she was born in like 29. But in grade school, they made her learn how to write with her right hand because they would not allow her to write with her left. But yes. David wasn't in school until the end of this film, right? Like there was no one to teach him, right? He he learned everything on his own, right? Didn't he go to... At the very beginning? At the very beginning, he was going to a school where there were like maybe one or two other black kids, which I, which I think is why it made such an impact. Yeah, maybe. That when he walked into Miss Johnson's class... All of all the, the children black. were black, and he was like, Yeah, that's right. What? That's right. Where am I? Well, maybe they didn't have the same education about left-handed people that is possible and it's also possible the kid was just left-handed yeah so. <laughs> that just stuck out i was like oh well I mean, there, no, there's nothing wrong with it i love left-handed people <laughs> that's not what she told me oh, earlier no. <laughs> but it, it just it was interesting yeah all right yeah, yeah. I, I suspect that the obvious answer is probably the true one which is the kid was probably left-handed yeah and, so, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. I like reading into it. Okay. So, well, would you good. would you recommend this to people? I would. Yeah. Would you recommend it to anybody or are there people you wouldn't recommend it to? <sighs> racists? No, wait, I guess you would recommend it to a racist. I would recommend but, yeah. it to racists for sure. You just know they're not going to enjoy it. They're probably, they'll probably turn it off. Or you know what they might, I'm not going to even finish that. They're going to learn a lesson. They will learn a lesson. Change their ways. Hopefully, you know, mm. it's and it's great to learn about people that don't look like you. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know if there's anybody I wouldn't recommend it to. Like yeah. I said, I think like for kids, I feel like a very specific setting for mm-hmm. them to watch it. Um, I th- I do think like sixth grade would be a really great. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Age to watch this. Around the age that David is yeah. in the movie, I think is like, you know, a really great, a, 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 the perfect age. Yeah. I will say, though, when you see the dog get shot oh. at the beginning. Oh. Like, yeah, yeah, I was like, we were both like, oh, no. <laughs> you can't kill the dog at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Like, what? The name of the movie is Sounder. Yeah. He doesn't get killed. So that was yeah. great. Um, Yeah. I, I think being around the age of the main character 
is great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. It was good. Well, um, we have to draw a movie. Hold on. <gasps> we have to draw a movie. Okay, and we have picked, do you want me to read it? Yeah, yeah. Cat Baloo. Cat Baloo. I don't know anything about it. Oh, boy. So we'll we'll find out, we'll find out and watch it, and then we'll talk about it. Hey. Hopefully we'll enjoy it. <laughs> All right, until next time, everyone, bon cinema. <laughs>